Could your writing nook use a little sprucing up? Hi, I'm Colleen M. Story, and this is Writing and Wellness. Did you know that certain things about your writing nook could make you feel stressed out or sleepy? Other things might give you headaches, make you less productive, or even distract you from your work. Several studies have found out that a comfortable working atmosphere can make a big difference in your productivity. If you're a writer, you're probably spending more time than you really want to in a chair. There are standing desks out there today that can help a lot, but you can't stand all the time. It's best to do a little bit of sitting and a little bit of standing. And when you are sitting, it's important that you have a chair that's really working for you. And that chair should have these five characteristics. First, you want a nice flat cushion on the bottom. If the cushion comes up on the sides, not a good idea. It's gonna end up hurting your hips as you go because it tends to distort the way that your hips would naturally sit when you're sitting in a flat cushion chair. Second thing you wanna look for is a nice tall back that's going to support your full back as you're sitting. Then of course you're looking for a good lumbar support. So you want that general shape that a chair with a lumbar support has, that kind of swirly shape. Uh, you don't want it just a flat back but don't be too overly concerned by that unless you're somebody who regularly is sitting right back up against that chair. If you are, then it might be a little more important to you to make sure that's very comfortable. I have a back brace that I recommend. I'll put that in the notes. There's another video that you can see where I, where I show you that back brace. The third thing you wanna look for is armrests. If you can while you're working, you want to be resting your arms on those armrests. Over time, what really tends to drag when, you're, when you don't have support on your arms is the weight on your shoulders. And you're gonna end up with shoulder pain, perhaps neck pain in the back of your neck. The fourth thing you wanna have in your chair is an adjustable height. Now, most of them do these days. That's not really hard to find, but it is something that's good because we all work at different styles of desks. So you need to be able to position your chair where you want it when you're working at your desk. So make sure that that is adjustable as well. The last thing you wanna look for is a good durable material. You don't wanna feel like in two years you gotta buy another chair. If you are serious about your writing and about the time that you're gonna be spending on it, you owe it to yourself to invest in a chair. Natural light is best. If you can position your writing nook somewhere near a window, that will help you a lot. It's easier on your eyes and it helps you also to feel more awake and energized while you're writing. You may still need some lighting or maybe you have a writing nook that you can't put near the window. Then you've got to look at other lighting options. I would caution you not to go with the overhead fluorescence. If you're in a room where that's what you've got, I would advise you to turn those off and get different lights that you can use for your writing nook. Why? Many people are sensitive to fluorescence and plus they just tend to be tiring. Or if you have migraine headaches, you don't want overhead fluorescence on you all day. Your writing nook will feel a lot better if you position some floor lamps, but position them to the side and behind you and then make sure they're not casting glare on your screen, whatever computer you're using. Here's one more tip for you. Try not to make the lighting too bright. In an interesting 2013 study, researchers found that more dim lighting tended to inspire more creativity. Maybe you can repaint the walls right around where you are. If you can't do that, then you can use color in your paintings, in the pillows and blankets that you may have around in any sort of knickknacks that you're using, maybe bring in some fresh flowers. Color can make a big difference in how you feel. And you may not realize this, you know, when you're working at your, in your writing nook day after day, but just give it a try. See if you can set up a splash of color somewhere. Here's a quick guide to what each color can inspire in you if you're trying to decide which colors you want to use more of. <music> Blue, for instance, they say enhances clarity and productivity. It's really good for the editing side of your brain. Yellow is said to lift your spirits, to make you feel more energetic, a little happier. So if you tend to be feeling discouraged on your story, grab some yellow pillows or a yellow picture or something and put those up and around. Orange similarly is an uplifting color. Maybe you like it a little bit better than yellow. Red stimulates activity and it can also bring you on the edges of your emotion, you know, toward the angry edge of the emotions. If you really like red, sure use it, but keep in mind that it may not be one that you wanna use if you're trying to enhance creativity or productivity. 
Pink has a calming effect, and the experts say that it can help reduce your appetite. I don't know how true that is, but if you're finding yourself over snacking a little too much while you're writing, I don't know, throw some pink on the wall and see if that helps. Green is a really good color for a writing nook. It tends to be balancing, reassuring. It has that natural feel to it. It may be just the color you need to feel like your writing nook is really inviting. Purple and indigo, as you might expect, can help stimulate the imagination. If you're feeling like you need to get some new ideas going, or you're in the middle of your novel and you want to keep the ideas coming for what happens next, then purple is the way you want to go. White can bring a feeling of openness and freedom. So maybe if you have kind of a cramped writing nook, white might be the way to go. Keep in mind that it can also feel kind of cold and clinical. So maybe a white wall would work good, but then some other colors on it to help balance that out. Black can help you feel strong and tough. So if you're writing a thriller or a mystery, then maybe black is what you want. Be careful as it can also be kind of dulling and make you feel sleepy if it feels too much like night. So again, maybe balance it with some other splashes of color to help subdue a little bit that sleepy feeling. But if you want to feel tough and strong and you got some strong characters in your books, it may be just what you need. Final note, deep, highly pigmented colors tend to be more stimulating. Whereas the calmer pastel, lighter colors tend to be more soothing and calming. If you're having to share your writing nook with somebody else, you may be very familiar with having arguments over how hot or how cold the room should be. Keep in mind that having it too cold can seriously affect your productivity. In one study, researchers found that participants made 44% more mistakes on a task when it was 68 degrees in the room than they did when it was 77 degrees. If you're feeling cold, you are distracted. It's a form of distraction. So part of your brain is thinking about how cold you are and how you wish you were somewhere that was warmer, and that naturally affects your creativity and your focus on the task at hand. The EPA says that indoor pollution can be two to five times, and sometimes even up to a hundred times, worse in terms of being more polluted than outdoor air. If you're feeling while you're working eye irritation, nose and throat irritation, headaches, asthma, even dizziness and fatigue can sometimes be related simply to the air quality in your writing nook. So how can you improve things? First, as often as you can, open up a window and air out your home. Second, dust frequently. Third, vacuum frequently. I know, not much fun, but it will help keep the air a lot cleaner for you. Try to avoid chemical air fresheners. They're basically just putting chemicals in the air that are disguising the aromas and the pollution rather than actually getting rid of it. And if you want to improve the air naturally, make sure you get natural essential oils that you're using, aromatherapy oils that you're burning, uh, put a little bit of lavender and a cotton ball and stick it on your writing desk, something more natural like that. You can even boil water on the stove, a few drops of essential oil in it. Things like that will be much healthier for you than a chemical air freshener. Next, get some more houseplants. NASA did some research where they found that certain houseplants were really good at removing pollutants from the air, especially things like ozone and benzene that are really bad for us. Most any plant will help you do that, but I do remember from the study that spider plants were one of them that, were, that was good at it. Plants over time can actually create mold if you're watering them too much or if the soil isn't being cared for right, so you do have to take care of them. But if you're someone that enjoys plants and you want to do that, by all means get a few and put them around your writing nook. It will help the air feel better in that area. And the last suggestion would be to get an air purifier. I did that just this last summer because we had so much smoke going on from the uh, western fires that were happening that it just got unbearable and to the point where I just had to do something. Do your research, find a quality one, and it also makes sure that you can get replacement filters because you will need to do that as you go. But investing in that for your writing nook can make a big difference. <laughs> Just these few little changes can be enough to make you feel totally refreshed and energized the next time you go into your writing nook. You may be surprised at how much just shifting things around and making a few changes can help you to get more of your work done.